let's start, you know, with your thoughts on the comments made by General Yakubu Gowon that the Nigerian civil war was fought to keep the country together and that it was not really about defeating any part of the country. What do you make about this? What do you make over this? Well, first of all, we must understand that war in itself is a display of anarchy. When you talk about war, that is lawlessness at its peak. So when you say you are fighting war to keep Nigeria one, no. You fought the war as a manifestation of your incompetence in the management of the crisis that was then part of Nigerian history. And let me explain what I mean. Before independence, the colonial power retained the kind of brainwashed the Nigerian people to maintain their ethnic cleavages and they needed to make Nigerians live in that disunity so that they could continue their colonization against Nigeria. So they made the North, for instance, to believe that being educationally disadvantaged, they should not rush into independence because of the likelihood that they will be dominated by the more advanced Southern Nigeria. And the North bought into that. And that was why we were delayed from 1954 to 1960. But the actual thing is that Britain just wanted more time to dominate Nigeria. So after independence, that mindset that the South is likely to dominate them remained. And the North was always at every slightest chance, reminding the South that we did not intend to be one country with you because we are suspecting your domination. But the 1966 military coup, pure military coup, has nothing to do with ethnicity or anything. Even though people who organized it were predominantly from one ethnic group. But that reinforced the belief by the North that these people, we said it, they want to dominate us. And then they carried out a revenge coup in 1966 July which was meant actually to separate from Nigeria, not to keep Nigeria one. But the Britain also reminded them that the resources are in the East. So if you leave Nigeria, we are going to support the East. So you better run down that you have acquired power to maintain Nigeria as one. And that made them to have a rethink. And by that time, a lot of Igbos, for instance, have been killed during the pogrom, during the massacre. So there was an entrenched suspicion between the ethnic groups. And this led them to go to Aburi for a conference and they reached agreement. And it was still Gowan who came back and reneged on the agreement, which inevitably led to the bitter war. And after the war, Gowan declared again, no victor, no vanquished, and promised to reconcile, rehabilitate, and reconstruct the Southeast, which he failed again to do. So all the available opportunities for him to make Nigeria one and consolidate that unity, he was not able to do. But let us make one point clear, that after a while, when he himself was thrown away by some of those his colleagues, that was when maybe he recognized that what happened in 1966 was a military coup and not any ethnic coup, because he himself was thrown away by the same military people. I wonder which uh, terminology we use to describe the ones who threw him away. But one thing is clear. After that, it looks as if he went into theology, had a rebirth, and he came back and genuinely went through a southeast apologizing and asking for forgiveness for his role in the civil war. And we know that though the southeast has been marginalized and ill-treated in that war, which was not caused by them, we know that Gowan has tried to make certain types of penance. We should forgive each other because hostilities need not last forever. So I can submit respectfully that ethnic chauvinism, the youthful exuberance of the military young chaps that took over government, who were actually very impressionable at that age, their inability to manage the crisis contributed in the disunity that resulted in the civil war, we must learn to forget and to forgive so that we will move ahead as one united Nigeria. I remember what Ojuku said 
when he came back from exile, he said, we had fought one civil war. We don't need to fight another one. That he is going to go to war to fight if Nigeria is ever threatened again. And I stand by that. Nigeria being the hope of the black man. Nigeria being the hope of Africa. Nigeria being blessed and in our enlightened self-interest, the capabilities and blessings of Nigeria will be better harnessed if we come together, live together under one united Nigeria. Nigeria based on equity, unity, peace, and justice. Nigeria will achieve its aims. I support the opinion that we should move ahead now as one united Nigeria. And I'm willing to fight if Nigeria is threatened. Let me point out that presently in Nigeria, what is causing disunity is no longer ethnic chauvinism and religious fanaticism. It is now the incompetence and corruption of the leaders of Nigeria that have inflicted hunger, hardship, degradation, deprivation on the citizens, making them too poor. And when you are poor, even to adhere to theology is very difficult. Because there's no reception to theology when a man is hungry. A, an angry man is a hungry man. A hungry man is an angry man. And is easily irritated no matter what. So the threat to our unity today is poverty. Which is orchestrated by the incompetence and corruption of the ruling class. World Bank report just gave a report that more than 129 million Nigerians are poor. And fuel price is down 1,200 naira per liter, unsustainable. And naira has been depreciated to the point that you have 1,700 and something naira per dollar. And you can see electricity. In one week, we have celebrated more than three national grid collapse. And some people are still pretending that they are the leaders of Nigeria. No, they are leaders of darkness, not leaders of light. And they are now the greatest source of our, you know, our disunity. And let me point out, free and fair election is the only solution to our disunity now. Because if we have the ability to choose our leaders in a free, fair, credible, verifiable, periodic election, then we will say that our will will be imposed on the leadership of Nigeria. And they will give us the dividends of democracy. Anything short of that is going to threaten the existence of this country. Not because of ethnic chauvinism or religious fanaticism, but because you cannot sustain a diverse people living together in abject right, poverty. Um, permit me to come in on this point. And I like your oratory prowess when articulating what Nigeria should be as a unified entity. But if that is the case, why is it that Mr. Peter Obi, the presidential candidate of the Labour Party, someone you know very well, is being almost forced to explain his congratulatory message to General Gowon? Because the likes of Simon Ekpa and several others are saying because he's desperate for power, he's beginning to cower some are saying that he's desperate to become president, so he's now going soft and he's trying to belong. Hence, he's doing what he's doing and he's trying to explain the reason why. That's to show that probably we do not see ourselves as one. Well, let me say that all the protests, all the agitations you're seeing Nigerian over, like I said, they are results of manifestation of marginalization, manifestation of injustice, manifestation of poverty. And it is everywhere in Nigeria. You just have the Yoruba nation agitators who submitted letter to the Prime Minister of Britain that they want a separate country. You can see that Boko Haram is route. with dating. What I want to find out from you is, people. why is... Why is yes. uh, Mr. Obi's statement of congratulation yes. to General Gowon hitting up the polity is the big question if we see ourselves as one Nigeria. Well, you should be prepared to ask Obi that when you see him. I've always said mm. that it is good for a leader to always think before he talks. 
in other words before you make a statement it must be a statement you have thought through and you should be able to stand by it you should not be you know a fair weather kind of leader that when they push you this side will explain when they push you this side will explain you should be able to articulate your view at any point and stand by it however like i said no human being is infallible he does not need to explain if he is sure what he's saying that he believes in it but if he needed to explain and he explained then you should hold him responsible for his own actions and for his own words let me tell you something i believe in unity of nigeria i believe general gowan made a whole lot of mistakes because he himself prevaricated on a lot of things that would have prevented the war even when they were by his own initiation and so when you say pito b made a statement and then he's clarifying there's nothing wrong in clarification however there is a need to always be sensitive and then be sure of the statement you want to make so that you don't begin to want to panda on all sides i've always said it is good to stand on one side and then whatever consequences it is then you take it i i don't have anything against anybody saying anything it's a free word freedom of expression but you should be able to stand by your word I don't think it has anything to do with the unity of Nigeria because what Nigerians are looking out for now like I said is competent leaders of capacity so if he expressed his opinion and withdrew it or modified it that is his right to do and he's entitled to it now, Mr. Okonkwo, you said earlier, you know, that the factors dividing Nigeria is not ethnic or religious affiliated, but you said corruption and bad leadership. Yep. However, some analysts, you know, believe politicians usually use the divide and rule tactic. You know, they use ethnicity, they use religion, you know, to divide Nigerians in order to win election like we witnessed in 2023. So how can Nigerians, you know, as a people, how can the electorate rise up? Of this very common gimmick very good now let me first of all agree with you that part of the incompetence of these leaders is having no policies to use to convince the people they resort to such primordial sentiments and that's why i'm saying that it is no longer part of our problem why am i saying that the present president threw up all the ethnic cards a miloko and uh, I don't know how to speak all this, so let me not speak the one that will nail me here. But I always hear of Yoruba Ronu, I don't even know what it means. However, after doing all those things, he lost his state. After saying Muslim, Muslim ticket, he did not even impress anybody. He still had the least votes as in relative to the opposition. So they exploit that tendency, but Nigerians have outgrown that. They win by rigging they win by electoral violence manipulation and corruption they don't win anymore by ethnic sentiments and religious fanaticism that's what i'm saying that the problem we have now is that their corruption of not being able to organize free and fair election abuse of public power for private gain it is no longer ethnic i mean there's no you can't go to the north and tell a northern now that you're a muslim and he should vote for you because you're a muslim after what he is suffering now under a muslim muslim ticket you can't go to anybody in the south in the southwest and say vote for me because i'm from southwest that is where the abing power came so i agree with you that some of these leaders because they don't have anything any policy to show to the people they try to exploit such primordial sentiments but they are fading away even as these incompetent and corrupt leaders are fading away out of the hemisphere of nigeria nigerians must rise in the interest of a united nigeria for the sake of the black man for the sake of africa and for the sake of all of us knowing that our diversity is our strength knowing that united we stand knowing that we will achieve economy of scale if we are together let me give you an example if this country is divided into six what it means is that each of those six must have their own army air force navy police differently meaning it will cost us six times to 
govern Nigeria, what is causing us now once? Do you think the British, they are not wise when they amalgamated the South and the North? They did not tell us that the reason is so that they will achieve lesser cost of governance. And it has nothing to do with trying to make us to live together. We should take advantage of that. Take advantage of economy of scale. Take advantage that when we live together under rule of law, there is no challenge we will not overcome. We are building a more progressive and perfect union as we go on. It is a process. It's not, a, it's not a, a, an incident. Building a more perfect union. Even United States, they are still progressing in building their union. So whatever challenges we have, every Nigerian should know that it's surmountable. I should not always be thinking about dividing Nigeria and separating Nigeria. We are a united nation in the Zolubul and, 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 and indissolvable under God. And we should move on in that capacity. Um, do, I, do some Igbo share this sentiment will be the big question. Because for those who <laughs> went through the war and those who were told yeah. about the war, maybe the Generation X might not be able to relate. But when you talk to every Igbo trader, in Nigeria, I mean, maybe yeah. in Lagos, for example, and you talk to probably upwardly mobile Igbo men in their 50s, their 60s, they do not share the sentiment because, hence, we have people that are sympathetic to the causes of Unam de Kanu, uh, apologies for the likes of Simon Eba. They still have a lot of cult following. Talk to us about it because when you speak like this, you seem to almost ignore the fact that. When you yeah. look to your left, you look to your right, there are people that still believe that they have been wronged and that one day, one day, they will still go to utopia. Good. Now, first of all, I am a Nigerian from Igbo extraction and I'm very proud of that. You just said we are traders. Yes, we are traders and we are travelers. And so always there will have to be a preference between a you know, for a larger space for anybody who by nature and nurture is a traveler and is a trader. And so in our enlightened interest, I know it as a fact that we will prefer a larger space because our nature demands that. Our nurture demands that. In Igbo land, there is a proverb. And again, and you will learn there is a proverb that only Jake only Siawo Akoko. And again, so these are the things that will make an Igbo man to travel out of his comfort zone, no matter how comfortable he is. And having that nature, I am telling you, Dr. Namde Azikiwe preferred a united Nigeria. Ojuku preferred a united Nigeria. Kenneth Okonkwo preferred a united Nigeria. Because I know, as a matter of fact, that as a trader and as a traveler by nature, it will be better for us as Ndibo. Ndibo are agents of development and they go about carrying development to anywhere they go to. I recall what Buba Mawa said when we were in a presidential campaign. Buba Mawa stood on a pulpit and said, The only true Nigerians who believe in Nigeria, they are Ndibo because everywhere you will see them. And when you see them, they build their homes there and they live there and develop there. It was quite unfortunate that before 1966, our quest for developing anywhere we stay was manipulated and misconstrued to be a quest for domination. I am happy it's no longer in the minds of Nigerians to think in that pattern and in that formula. Because I remember one old man from Kanu. He said during the June 12th, when the was left north he couldn't find a path i think yakasai he couldn't find one spare part he needed to repair his car and he said let's face it we need each other in this country we need each other especially in the who are the agents of development i told you before that that is that what is threatening our unity now is the incompetence and corruption what is happening in lagos why are Igbos feeling uncomfortable because there are some people like Bayo Nonuga, who will tell you Igbos are aliens in Lagos. Can you imagine? Aliens in Yoruba land. 
somebody being an alien in his own country. Is that not the incompetence and corruption I'm talking about? Abuse of public power for private gain. If you cannot convince the Yorubas to vote for you when you are a Yoruba man, you have failed. If you need to vilify another ethnic group, these are the things that are bringing about the sentiments of marginalization and the instigation of people saying, let us have our own home if you cannot guarantee our safety in the general Nigerian uh, country. And this is what I'm saying, that well, we must sit down to ensure that our country is built on equity, justice, and fairness. And you will see that every Nigerian will prefer to be a Nigerian. I am a movie actor. That's my primary constituency. Where we started Nollywood was in Lagos. And you know what? It was an Igbo film that was shot in Lagos. And the whole Nigerians accepted it. If they had anything against Ndibo, they would not appreciate that movie, Living in Bondage. And that's actually remade my mind. That look, nobody is interested in marginalizing anybody. Spirit of excellence cannot be rejected, no matter where it comes from and from whoever it comes from. Well, so I we must learn to be excellent in this country, excellent in leadership, excellent in whatever we do, so that we will be acceptable by everybody we are living with. To get done this, it shall be the key, and one Nigeria should be supported. It's worth living for, okay. and if need be, it's worth dying for. It's been a very interesting time, you know, speaking with you on Newsday. We do appreciate you honoring our invitation today. Kenneth Okonkwo, lawyer and politician, thank you so much for joining us.